Hello everyone, welcome to another Zohar reading session. I'm Marcus, um, once again filling in for Tony while he's away ill. And it's great to see many of you here again, once again. Uh, just think of us all coming together in these Zohar reading sessions as one big world group coming to draw the surrounding light, the force that we can draw from the Book of Zohar, which is considered by Kabbalists as the strongest source of such a light that we can attract into our world. And that's what we're here to do today, to, to gather together, to support each other, to strengthen each other in this drawing of the surrounding light from the Book of Zohar. And I've started uh, with a little bit of a diagram here. We'll get to reading who's with us today soon. Uh, but I want to start, before we get into the Book of Zohar, we'll give a little bit of a preparation so that we prepare our intention for it because that's really the main thing. As we know, Kabbalist Yehuda Ashlag, Bala Sulam, he wrote four introductory essays to prepare people to the Book of Zohar, really invested a lot in, in preparing people uh, to approach the Book of Zohar because our approach to it is really the key aspect of the reading meaning that we approach it with an intention where we exercise the intention to love, to bestow, to connect, just as the authors of the book of Zohar attained. And exercising that, that intention through the reading is what draws the force called the surrounding light, the higher level of thoughts and forces in reality into our world, which operates on us. And we'll get into a little bit of what that means. To open us up, I'm going to start with reading just uh, two or three paragraphs from this article. This is not the Zohar, this is an article of Rabash, uh, Kabbalist Baruch Shalom Halevi Ashlag. We actually read it this morning in the Daily Kabbalah lesson with Kabbalist Dr. Michael Leitman, uh, lessons that he gives every day now for, for, for many years. Uh, it's called, as you can see, what does it mean that before the Egyptian minister fell, the outcry was not answered in the work. Uh, it's in relation to Passover. It's one of the materials toward Passover. Uh, we'll read a few lines from it as a means. We'll see why we're doing this and uh, we'll also connect it into this aspect of how we're connecting as a world group. It says, according to the above, it is clear what they thought, that there is a minister of Egypt who detains the prayers. Yeah, so just from the outset, uh, the article talks about a state called Egypt. As we also know in the wisdom of Kabbalah, all these words that seemingly represent corporeal physical locations, they're not speaking about our physical world, they're rather pointing to inner states. And Egypt refers uh, in simple terms to the human ego. So the human ego is that aspect within us which detains the prayers, as it says here. Prayers are those requests, those... At every single moment we have certain desires, we always have certain wants, but at every single moment we can direct those into being a want to be similar to the want that the force that created us, the Creator, has towards us. And that is exercising and activating the prayers that we try to do during these Zohar readings. So that's why we're, I put this up here, because it makes us see right from the outset that uh, there's this force called the human ego, egoism, which operates on us. It could be, uh, in very simple terms, just our desires, our corporeal day-to-day -day desires for food, sex, family, money, honor, control, knowledge. That could be awakening and surfacing within us at every moment that... Uh, as if makes spirituality and the idea of aiming to love, to bestow, similar to our perfect eternal state in this soul that we all share, similar to that quality of the Creator towards us, that pure spiritual quality where there's no real reward that we can perceive within our egoistic perception of reality, our egoistic vessels as they're called in the wisdom of Kabbalah. So, there's this uh, ego that's detaining these prayers, that's detaining our uh, ability to focus on this one intention, this one request to wish to love and bestow and connect, as is the quality of the Creator. We asked, why does this minister have power to control the prayers of Israel? Israel too 
is Yeshar El. It comes from the words Yeshar El, which means straight to God or straight to the upper force, the straight to that force of the Creator, straight to the force of love, bestowal, and connection that we're talking about. It's that it's a tiny point of the desire within us that draws us all here. Uh, and that's what we're going to we'll just quickly go into seeing who's with us. And I've already, as I said, started putting together this diagram. I'm going to draw out who's with us because I want this image to be guiding us when we're reading the Zohar. I already saw up here Sylvie said hello. Uh, Rosie, Ed, Dewey, Eva, Johnny, hello to you all. Uh, Julie, we'll keep writing because this is the group now that's gathering to read from the Zohar. It's a, it's a really great thing. Mel from Melbourne. Uh, Ataraxia from Germany. Just to visualize that we're here together uh, preparing to, to connect love from Morocco from Lila. Lila is here. Uh, GP from New Jersey. Uh, Lynn, Michaela. We'll describe what this all is soon. Susan, nice to see you once again. Uh, Monica and Ulu and Kathy, hello to you all. Kathy. Uh, Olga, Carl, Vanya, we're all gathering together here to read the Zohar. Vanya, uh, Rosie, we put Jocelyn and Annie from North Carolina. Jocelyn, Annie, welcome to the group. Um, Andrew from Virginia, Anima, We're adding you here, Anima, who else do we have here, Zvonko, Francine, Mary, great to see you all, Mary, okay, we've run out of images here, we'll add a few more, Zid, and Mira and Dan and Luis. This is just on YouTube for now. Let's see if we can add just a few more from, from Facebook. Tammy, John, Mustafa, let's add you here. Uh, Eugenia as well in, on Facebook. Okay, so we're all gathering and I'm sure there'll be many, many more of you also gathering. Basically, this is showing that uh, when we gather here, our desires, we aim for our desires to be connected as, uh, as similar to this state we are in, in our final state of final state as one perfect soul. In the introduction to the book of Zohar, one of Bala Salam's four introductions, so he explains three states that the soul undergoes, a first state of being unconsciously adhered to the Creator, similar to how a womb is in the, is in the body of a person, uh, a fetus is in the womb of its mother, and it's got this complete unconscious adhesion with its mother. It, it's one with the mother, uh, but it's uh, unaware of it, and even though it's receiving all the life and, and, and fulfillment and abundance from the mother. And then we go through a process of exiting that state, seemingly, going through a process of development, through being uh, unconscious from that, regaining consciousness in the process, until we reach a point of undergoing a spiritual uh, development and regaining that consciousness and coming back to a con conscious adhesion with the Creator, which is called the third state of creation. So that's this state up here that we can aim toward when we're reading the Zohar. This is really trying to simplify some, some very major concepts that Baal Salam and the wisdom of Kabbalah in general teaches about very extensively. But in short, what are we aiming our intention at? This state where we're perfectly connected as one soul. You know, all of these points, points being the desires for spirituality that brought us here, desires which wish to have some kind of fulfillment beyond this world. So this desire is actually rooted in this spiritual state up here where we're all perfectly connected as a single soul with that force, the light of the Creator, being this 
uh, adhesive that connects us. And the book of Zohar was written from a state where 10 men, the Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and his group in a cave, attained these very lofty high states of spiritual connection and wrote to us from those states. So the book of Zohar, other than seeking it within its literal words about that state, it, uh, ha it embeds and, and holds within it the forces from that state. So by intending upwardly uh, to that state, to that higher spiritual state, through this reading, which is represented by the arrows here, so we draw those forces to ourselves, meaning that we draw ourselves closer to being in this perfect eternal connection in the state of our soul. And we also attract the forces to us through the book of Zohar, which is also written from a state of attaining that state from this world upward. So, so that should accompany us as we, as we head into it. We'll just read a few more lines from this article from the Daily Kabbalah lesson before we get into the Zohar. So it says, why does this minister, the ego, have the power to control the prayers of Israel? So if, if we're coming here with this desire for spirituality that brings us here and we're wanting to intend through this reading to, to picture ourselves and to invite that state of us being in this full state of love, bestowal, connection with uh, these forces of eternity and perfection flowing through us, so why does this minister have the power to control these prayers? Why does this ego within us with seemingly much smaller pleasures in mind, you know, things at a level just of transient fulfillments as, as much as we can picture them, why, do, why does that have the power to control these prayers of Israel, those who are trying to aim directly uh, as, as we showed here? Yeah, Israel being all those who have this common desire aiming straight to the Creator, as Israel means Yashar El, straight to, to God. That, that's, so all these, everyone here, this group is called Israel, ones who are uh, in this direction of aiming through the Zohar to, uh, to our future final state. The answer is that this is what they thought. Yeah, so it's only that we think. This is, this is something very, this article is a very uh, big challenge and exercise on our perception because uh, this e ego, we, we think that we have other desires, we have other needs, we have all kinds of day-to-day -day needs and fulfillments and pleasures that we need to fill ourselves with. Why? As Rabash writes here, it's because that's what we think. It's uh, only within our thoughts that it's this case. Yeah, so it's something to keep in mind here as we move on. The second question, who caused their minister to fall from his authority? Uh, yeah, like who caused this Ego. This article talks about a state called uh, how the king of Egypt died, meaning that this uh, ego within us, which controls us and which is seemingly detains us from being in a state of being directly aimed at our future final state of, of existence, that, uh, that that dies. So what, what caused this minister, this ego, to fall from its authority and, and allow us to to enter into that perfect eternal state of, of being in this mode of loving and bestowing and con perfect connection as is our true state as one soul. It is that they worked all the time and did not escape the campaign until there was room to reveal all the bad. Yeah, So working meaning that we're constantly thinking and applying this thought that behind everything is this creator, is this upper force which is controlling, plotting, doing everything in our reality, and which has the ability to pull us out of our egoistic small state into that high spiritual state. So that's considered the work here. We're, we're only talking about inner work, nothing, nothing externally. Uh, until there was room to reveal all the bad. Yeah, so when we're attracting the forces of the surrounding light, again, if we go back here, we're attracting those forces from that higher level up here. Here's the pen. Uh, it comes down to us, and when we attract these, when we attract more bestowal to ourselves, more of this loving, bestowing, spiritual force to ourselves, so we actually make room within ourselves to reveal uh, the egoism within us that's detaining us from the focus and the prayer on being aimed precisely at this. Yeah, so it's actually something positive. Kabbalists. Uh, Bala Sulam talks about how the happiest thing for him is having the wicked 
revealed within because when we reveal our egoism as blocking us off from spirituality we have revealed it before that we didn't reveal it it was there but we it was as if concealed from us and then we undergo this certain revelation and it allows that revelation is a first step towards correcting it similar to the saying that the diagnosis of a disease it's half is half of its cure so by drawing this surrounding light which we aim to do through, through the reading of the Zohar it allows us to uh, to have that reve revelation to reveal all the bad then they were rewarded with the truth yeah which the, 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 which is what we aim at until then there was also no minister here of theirs but they thought so yeah so this ego is simply something in our perception we, if if we if we can replace these thoughts of self benefit with thoughts of benefiting others which we come here to do now so that's that's how we can do this work that, that that's talking about here and how we can actually start changing our thoughts and supporting and strengthening each other to change those thoughts it follows that two things came at once which our sages call his divorce and his hand come as one yeah the two opposites in the same state that we uh, say before we approached anything spiritual before we approached the wisdom of Kabbalah and these texts and drawing the surrounding light it's as if uh, it's as if we didn't have any revelation of our egoism as holding us back from anything, right? We take a step towards wishing to see us, perceive us, feel us all connected as a single soul, and we as if feel this resistance to it at the same time. That's this idea of his divorce and his hand come as one. That uh, we, we make a step towards the Creator, seemingly, and we also feel a rejection it's like if a person wants to become a bodybuilder and develop a big muscles so uh, before that they never really felt their body after the first workout they do they'll feel all sore because all this resistance to their muscles is making them all sore it's breaking their muscles but then after that it allows their muscles to to develop and grow so similar thing here according to the above we need great strengthening yeah, this is what we are here to do, to strengthen each other. That's why I drew out every single person connected here now, because we are here to provide this hand to each other, like this, and to strengthen each other in this common intention through this text. So we need great strengthening, and to not escape the campaign, Yeah, not to let the ego simply wipe us away as we read this exalted text. But to believe that the Lord hears the prayer of every mouth, yeah, to believe, meaning to reach that perception and sensation of the idea that every sincere prayer that we can extract from such a situation, every prayer that we make, the Creator will hear it. It will be able to, will be able to to respond to whatever we pull out of this state. And there is no other force in the world but only one force, that of the Creator, and He always hears everything that is turned to Him. So that's something we can strengthen each other in now. We'll just take one more look at this. If we all uh, strengthen this one intention, this one direction, aiming through the text we're about to read of the Zohar uh, to the Creator, and let Him hear this common prayer, let Him hear this, uh, this connection of all these points in the heart aimed directly at that one source directly at wishing for our true state to be revealed and let's get into it now we will turn to the text uh, again anyone who wants to read the text directly just go to kabbalah.info our main website follow through to the zohar section on the left click study the zohar and we're going to be reading today shmini on the eighth day this one here so I'm already, of course, got it on the computer. And with that, we'll already get into the reading. On the eighth day, Shmini. Man was created in the Torah. One, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Happy are Israel, for the Creator gave them the holy Torah, which is the joy of everything. The joy of the Creator and the place where he roams. As it is written, and I was daily all delight. And the whole Torah is one holy name of the Creator. And the world was created in the Torah, as it is written, then I was beside him as trusted, Amun. Do not read it as Amun, 
but as Uman, a master craftsman, as she was his tool for creating the world. 2. Man was created in the Torah, as it is written, And God said, Let us make man. It is written, Let us, in plural tense. The Creator said to the Torah, I wish to create man. She said before him, This man will sin and vex you. If you are not patient with him, how will he persist? He told her, You and me will establish him in the world, for it is with good reason that I am called slow to anger. 3. The written Torah, Ziranpin, and the oral Torah, Malchut, established man in the world. As it is written, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. It is written in plural tense. This is the image and the likeness, both of which made man. Tselem, image, is Ziranpin, and Dmut, likeness, is Malchut, from the word Dmama, stillness or silence, who has nothing of her own except what she receives from Ziranpin. Also, man's soul is born from the Zivug of Ziranpin and Malchut, which is why it is written, in our image, after our likeness. Hence, the beginning of the Torah is in the letter Bet, which is the numerical value of two, implying Ziranpin and Malchut. 4. Why is the letter Bet open on one side and closed on the other side? When a person comes to join with the Torah, it is open to receive him and partake with him. And when a person shuts his eyes to her and goes by another way, she is blocked from the other side, like the bet, as it is written, If you forsake me for one day, I will forsake you for two days, and he will not find the opening until he re reconnects with the Torah face to face and will not depart it. Hence the Torah opens, calling upon people and declaring and summoning them, To you, O men, I call. 5. Bet has a shape of two roofs, on one line that connects them. One roof points up toward the heaven, and this is Ziranpin. And one roof points down toward the earth, and this is Malchut. And the Creator, Yesod, grips them and receives them. 6. The three upper lights, three lines, which are clung together, are the whole of the Torah, and they open doors to all. They open doors and impart upon faith, meaning Malchut, and they are home to all. This is why they are called house, since they are the three lines in the Bet, implying the three lines of Ziranpin, which are a house. And this is why the Torah begins with Bet, since she is the Torah, and the cure for the world. 7. Hence, for one who engages in the Torah, it is as though he engages in the Holy Name. And the whole Torah is one sublime Holy Name. And because it is a Holy Name, it begins with Bet, the entirety of the Holy Name. The three lines in Journeyed came and pitched, which are the three lines of Ziranpin, which are three ties that affect the faith, Malchut. 8. All those who engage in Torah cling to the Creator and are crowned in the decorations of Torah. They are loved above and below, and the Creator offers them His right hand, mercy. It is even more so with those who engage in Torah at night as well, for they have established that they partake in divinity and join together. And when the morning comes, the Creator decorates them with a single string of grace, so they will be among the higher and among the lower. 9. And all these morning stars sing together when the assembly of Israel, Malchut, and all who engage in Torah come to be seen before the King. As it is written, When the morning stars sang together, 
and all the sons of God shouted for joy. What is shouted for joy? It is written, The earth is broken, broken down, meaning, meaning shattered. This is so because these judgments, called God's children, are broken. They all break before the morning, when the morning rises in the world, which is the illumination of Chesed de Zeranpin. As it is written, Now Abraham arose early in the morning. Abraham is Chesed. Hence, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Zion and Jerusalem 11. The Lord bless you out of Zion, and see the good of Jerusalem. From Zion, which is the Yesod, also foundation of Malchut, blessings emit to all, as it is written, For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forever. Since Zion, the Yesod of Malchut, was filled with blessings, Jerusalem, Malchut, is blessed there, and there are rachamim, mercies, in her. And when Jerusalem is blessed, the whole nation is blessed. 12. All the days of your life. So a bow will not appear in your days, as it did with your father. For a bow indicates judgments. It is said about that, and see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life, that in all your days you will see the good of Malchut, and there will be no judgments in her. And see your children's children, that they will fear sin, and be pious and holy. Then peace be upon Israel, upon the Rosh, the head of Ziranpin, called Israel, as long as it has Gar, Rosh, so it will not lack anything. This is because the letters in Israel are the letters of Li Rosh, I have a head. And peace be on the Rosh of Ziranpin, as long as there are righteous in the world. 13. Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. The children are Chagat de Ziranpin. The children's children are Nahi, as it is written, All your sons will be taught of the Lord, concerning Nahi. And it is written, the precious sons of Zion, which are Nehi de Ziranpin, that connect with Zion, Yesod of Malchut, as it is written, and the glory of children are their fathers. The sons are Chagat, which crown in the patriarchs, Chochmah and Bina. The sons, Chagat, are not crowned and are not watered by the river, Bina, except when the fathers, Chub, Chochmah and Bina, are crowned and blessed by Keter, as it is written, and the glory of children are their fathers. Okay, friends, that's all we have time for today. It's been amazing being with you. I'll just say hello to, quickly, some of others of you who have joined since before. Uh, Elena from Sudan, very, very nice to see you here. Annie, Clara, and Henny, Henry, sorry, and Hayes, and Dan or Daniela from the Netherlands. I think you've all joined since we since we read the names before. And also Zvonko, love from Macedonia, and Francine. I remember you were there from before, Francine. Anyone else on Facebook here who joined in? Uh, hello, also to you. Actually, many of you, yes. Uh, John, Tammy, Stephen, Juanita, and Carmen from New Jersey. It's been amazing to be with you once again, everyone, and I look forward to once again uh, being with you. Let's also think of Tony, that he gets well very soon, and we'll leave you out as well with this short clip uh, by Rav Leitman, also giving uh, what it means to feel the Zohar. So let's go out with this, and until next time, thank you, everyone. 
Whoever wants to feel the Zohar has to understand that the Zohar reveals to us the network of connections between us and how this network is inspired by the attribute of bestowal which is revealed in it, which is called the Creator. And this inspiration, this revelation, takes place according to the law of equivalence of form. While we read the Zohar, we have to think about how the light is revealed inside our common clean.